So if your institution wants to shrink its carbon footprint, if it wants to take credit for being a better environmental steward, do business with Evergreen. And that's part of the design. Uh, fourth, we're trying to link this strategy to growing sectors of the economy. So in Northeast Ohio, you know, uh, automakers are not particularly growing these days, if you haven't noticed. But there are sectors that are growing, just as in your city. The health sector is a very large growing sector. The uh, retirement nursing homes, also very large. We have an aging population, people like myself. Um, we have renewable energy is growing. The concern for locally grown food is growing. So these are sectors that we try to link our strategy to. And then fifth, we are trying to get to a scale that we'll describe to you. And that requires good, strong management, and it requires financing, access to low-cost capital. Uh, the businesses we're putting together are not particularly cheap, as you'll see. Um, I've worked in the nonprofit sector virtually all my life. Um, I've worked in international development, and I've worked here in the United States. And one thing I know is in the nonprofit sector, or in the kind of alternative sector, uh, we, we are capable of building some really interesting models, individual generous, I mean really beautifully designed models that never get to scale. They rarely get to a scale that can impact an entire community. And we're not interested in doing that. We are trying to move to a scale that can really create a tipping point in the life of Cleveland. So uh, this is what we've got going. You'll see up there in the right hand that very good looking man in the white shirt is sitting here today. <laughs> looking even sharper in a black shirt. Um, but that's uh, Keith Parkham and Medrick Addison are the two first employees and now the first two worker owners of Evergreen Cooperative Laundry. But we've launched, uh, we're in the process of launching three companies. Two are launched and out of the gate. One is uh, Evergreen Cooperative Laundry, the other Ohio Cooperative Solar. We're about to break ground on Green City Growers. I'll describe those uh, quickly to you. Um, our design criteria for what kind of business we develop is, as it says, we want them to be for profit. So we want them to be able to stand on their own, although we, we, we are fortunate to access philanthropic funding. So we can put in some early dollars that are the cheapest capital of all, uh, philanthropic money but they can't come back for more. They need to stand on their own and become for-profit uh, viable businesses. We hire locally, so we're not trying to hire from all over Cleveland, we're trying to hire from that footprint. And we're hoping that people will stay in that footprint once hired. A lot of the businesses match to the needs of the anchor institutions that have laundry needs or food needs, not all the business, but because those institutions are anchored, unlike the corporations, they're not going to get up and leave. Cleveland Clinic's going to be there in 100 years. So why not uh, attach our businesses to them and their success since they're the part of the economy that's growing? We pay living wage plus benefits. And in fact, we've made a determination. I don't know if this will change over time. I hope not. We've made a determination that uh, worker owners of Evergreen Co-ops get a free health care package. So then there may be a $10 copay, but there's no, they don't have to buy into the health care package. It's part of the right of being a um, They're green. The companies are green, and decidedly so. And it's part of the culture, and we want to get them greener over time. They're employee-owned. Their, their current form is worker co-ops. We might include other forms of worker ownership, but we're, we're registering, incorporating all these as cooperatives under Ohio co-op law. And finally, as part of the bigger social mission, again, remember, of, of stabilizing and, and revitalizing the neighborhood, each company that's part of the Evergreen Network, because it receives access to low-cost capital that's put together for them, and because it receives business planning and development and so forth, it makes a commitment that in perpetuity, 10% of the earnings of the company will go not into worker accounts as patronage, but will go back to a fund called the Evergreen Cooperative Development Fund that's been established. And that fund has a mission of seeding the development of new businesses, new cooperatives, again, in the area. So that part of the success of being an evergreen worker owner is not only having your company succeed, but having it run in a way that there are profits that can contribute to other people in the neighborhoods having the same opportunity. 
Uh, very quickly, the Evergreen Cooperative Laundry is uh, really state of the art. It's the greenest in the state, as I said. It's in a lead silver building. Uh, we use far less water, far less energy for heat than uh, our competitors. Uh, when fully operational, we'll be at 50 uh, worker owners. We're at about 25 now, roughly, roughly 25. We're hiring more. One of the things, um, Medrick has to take a red eye back tonight, unfortunately, because on Monday morning, we just landed two new contracts that total three million pounds, and Medrick needs to figure out where we're going to put all this laundry. <laughs> 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 Thank God he's in charge of that, making that decision rather than me, because <laughs> I know nothing about that. Um, but for those of you, I, I won't go through the sort of capital stack, but in order to open the doors to get this company going, it's a $5.7 million capitalization. So that's a serious amount of money we had to put together. And we put it together at the time of the entire collapse of the international financial system. Um, so we've got uh, $750,000 of grant funding in, from the Cleveland Foundation, which is one of the key partners and catalysts of this, which will be repaid over time out of the profits of the company back to the Evergreen Fund, not to the foundation, so they can be redeployed. This is all debt. There's uh, uh, virtually no equity in it. So we don't have outside investors, for instance. There are two commercial rate bank loans that we've been able to get, $750 each. The city found a very creative way to take HUD 108 money, which is fabulous money if you work with your economic development director in your city, to put into this its long-term low interest loan of about 20 years. Fabulous patient capital. Um, pardon me? Two, what is it called? Uh, HUD, and it's from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and it's section 108. So it's called HUD 108. Um, EDA, which is the Economic Development Authority, is part of the Commerce Department. Uh, we were able to get $200,000 of working capital in there because it's, you know, we funded 18 months of losses because we knew we'd have to ramp up the business. And then we put a New Markets Tax Credit deal into this, which is a $5 million tax credit deal, which when the structure collapses, I don't know if many of you know about New Markets Tax Credits. It can be very useful and inventive. It's mostly a full employment strategy for lawyers in America, as far as I can tell. <laughs> uh, but if you could get the deal together, when the structure collapses, it will leave behind about $1.2 million free and clear in the business, as, as it will, will be essentially equity capital in the business. So there's a, we could talk about that. There's a whole capital stack in each one of these. Yes. When which structure collapses? The, what's called the New Market Tax Credit Structure. It's a seven-year structure financing. And it, once the, we could talk about this. But <laughs> it's, it's a, a Clinton administration, Robert Rubin, complicated tax structure. But it can benefit low-income communities if used right. Um, these are pictures of our uh, uh, solar crews. Ohio Cooperative Solar is, does solar and weatherization services. We're doing installations on the roofs of large uh, hospitals and universities that can't take credit. They can't take the federal solar tax credits, <coughs> but the for-profit worker co-op Ohio Cooperative Solar can, so the business model works. Um, you'll hear about that in the video. And uh, we're about to break ground on a, a large, we think it will be the largest urban food production greenhouse in America, five acres under glass, that's 220,000 square feet, one giant building, on a 10 acre site where you, we've just assembled the final parcel of land. Um, and it's not a boutique operation, it's designed as an employment opportunity that will create 45 to 50 jobs and will grow uh, food. It's going to grow about five million heads of lettuce and hydroponics a year, and about 300,000 pounds of basil. And one question you might ask, is this going to put local lettuce growers in Northeast Ohio out of business? The answer is no, because there ain't no local lettuce growers. <laughs> so, the great state of California, from where I grew up, uh, in, in Arizona, supply virtually all the lettuce for Northeast Ohio. So it's all trucked in 2,000 miles of carbon. And our proposition is we're going to grow this right downtown in the middle of the city and, and sell it to the local food market. Um, 
Uh, and by the way, you know, one of the things that's so interesting about all this is, in some ways, this is a, economists would call an import substitution strategy. Rather than bring stuff into your city from miles, hundreds, thousands of miles away, build it up from, from within to keep the money going, to keep circulating the money. In Northeast Ohio, we annually pay and consume about over $7 billion of food. This isn't just Cleveland, it's whole Northeast Ohio. $7 billion of food of all kinds of which about two to three hundred million dollars is grown in Northeast Ohio. So all the rest of the money leaves the area. So we're trying to grow as much as we can to capture it. Uh, we've got a newspaper, I'll, I could talk about that. And we're trying, uh, our goal is to do three or four new businesses every year. We're working off a list of 14 new business opportunities developed with the anchor institution. Some of them will pan out, some won't, but we do business, feasibility and business plan, and I'll describe the model. Before introducing um, Medric, what I'd like to do is show you this five minute video, and I'll shut up. You can see some of the people. In this video, you'll see worker owners, you'll see the institutional investors in this strategy, the mayor, and the like. So let me put this on. <laughs> 